Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to take a close look at the book module that's found in Lightroom Classic CC. Now, you may have noticed I'm not in the book module at the moment. I'm in the library module. I recommend that you begin in the library module and you do a few things here which will make the creation of your book much easier. Specifically, do three things. Get your images together either in a, in a folder or in a collection. So this is step one. I have all the images that I want printed in my book in a collection. I called it my street photography. So these are some of my favorite street images. So I put them all in this collection. Number two, order them the way you want them to print in your book with the very first image, this one being the front cover of the book and the very last image, this one being the back cover of the book and all the images in between. I have them in the order I want them to appear in my book. So that's step two. Step three is go over to the metadata and either the title or the caption, put any text you want to appear with the image there. So if you'd like, for in this case, it's a street photography book, and I think I want the city it was taken and the date it was taken put with the image. So in the title, I have Toronto, June 19th, 2015. That's when I took this image. So I did that with every image. Also, I happen to have captions here. Uh, I just, you don't need both. I just happen to put the actual uh, camera I used, lens, and the settings, 1 to 50 of the second F4, all that stuff is right here. So I could do either or. I could either have the title, Toronto, June 19th, 2015, printed along with this image, or maybe I'll prefer the caption, Fujifilm X-T1, 23 millimeter lens, 1 to 50 of second F4 at ISO 640. So do either or, it doesn't matter. I could easily have put Toronto, June 19th, 2015 in the caption area. It doesn't matter. So that's the third thing you do. So now we have them in a collection. We have them in the order we want them in. And I have titles in where I want them. And I'm ready to go over to the book module. Now, when you click on the book module with your version of Lightroom Classic CC, it may auto-populate your book. So it may put all these images in order in your book. And that's kind of why we did what we did, uh, meaning we reordered them in the library module and we added the caption or the title. We did all that because this saves a lot of time. But you'll notice mine didn't auto populate. That's because I have a setting turned off. Now you need to go to the book preferences for the book settings. So go up to the top menu, book, then down to book preferences and you can see that we have this little dialog box. Now we have really three or four things here. First of all is the default photo zoom. Uh, by default I think it's going to be zoom to fill. So it's going to fill the entire page with your image so it may crop out some of your image. Now usually we don't want our images cropped so we don't want the book module to crop away part of our image. So I prefer zoom to fit so it's going to fit the entire image onto our page. Next here is the autofill option for start new books by autofilling. So if that was checked, as soon as I click on the book module, it would repopulate or populate my book with my images. I don't like it doing that, so I have that off. Now fill text boxes with, and this is where I mentioned to either put the text in the title or in the caption. And you could now pick what you want. Do you want the title to appear with the image or do you want the caption text to appear with the image? You also could just do filler text, which allows you to put your own text image to image. So one image, you might type one thing, another image, you'll type something else. So you could do that in the book module by doing filler text. Um, also, the other choice is the file name. So the actual file name, this is a Fujifilm image, so it's going to have the Fujifilm file name or whatever. 
So it's up to you. I'm going to go with that title metadata. So it's going to have the city and the date I took it. Constrain captions to this text safe area. Yes, I want that. I don't want my text text to be outside of the text safe area because it may not print properly. So I want that. So those are the book preferences. Now we go over to the right hand column and we have all these different options for our book. We'll start at the very top book settings. We have a number of different types of books we could print. Three of them use Blurb. Blurb is a company that prints books and they it's really nice. It's integrated in Lightroom. You could do all your book layout here, all your text and images, put the way you want it. And then down at the bottom, you click this button, send book to Blurb. And then dialog boxes pop up, allowing you to write your, your uh, address information where you want the book shipped to and credit card info to pay for it. And it's all integrated very easily in Lightroom and it works very well. So we have three different types of Blurb books. We have the photo book, which is a book that's mainly going to be images a magazine. So if you're doing a magazine layout, you may prefer to use a magazine or a trade book. And a trade book is mainly a book that is mostly text, but there are images as well. So if you have an, a book that you've written and it has images to support the writing, you're probably going to want a trade book. On the other hand, if you have an image that is really just images and you have some text to support the images, you're probably going to want a photo book. And if you have a magazine, of course you want a magazine. Now there are two other choices, a PDF. This will just create a PDF on your computer that will be laid out like a book or JPEG. And JPEG isn't going to be laid out a book like a book. It's just going to be all these images as individual JPEGs. And it, since I have 32 images, it's going to be 32 individual JPEGs. So you may not want that either. So we're going to go with the blurb photo book. And when you pick the choice here, we have different sizes and we have small square which is seven by seven a portrait which is eight inches wide by 10 inches tall a standard landscape which is 10 inches wide by eight inches tall or these larger ones a 13 by 11 landscape or a 12 by 12 square now the size you pick will affect the price of your book i'm going to go to a standard landscape of course the bigger the book the more it's going to cost um now the cover hardcover uh, which will be a hardcover book and the image, my cover front and back cover images will be printed right on the cover or do we want a dust jacket so it's going to have a blank cover but it'll have a dust jacket with the images on it or do you want a soft cover this a two affects the price of the book you can see that as it's laid out now a hard cover image wrap book will run forty dollars and 99 cents a hardcover dust jacket book will run 39.99 and a soft cover book runs $24.99. So for the sake of this demonstration, let's go with the hardcover image wrap book. Now, what type of paper do you want to use? We have several to choose from. And again, these will affect the price of your book. Premium lusters, what I usually like. It's got a little bit of a gloss to it, but not real glossy. And it's not matte either. So I prefer that. If you're doing a trade book, you'd probably prefer a matte book. It depends. Um, do you want just an uncoated book? Do you want Proline Pearl Photo? This really does make the images look nice, but you'll notice that is considerably more money. It went from $40.99 to $52.99. So I'm going to go with that premium luster. You also have some standard books. You also have a lay flat option, which costs $52.99. So you won't have a binding that kind of encumbers the uh, edges of your image that are near the binding. It'll be totally lay, allow the book to lay flat so your images will look a little better. Of course, that does cost more. So we're going to go with, uh, let's just say the Premium Luster book, which is $40.99. Then the logo page. Now I'm going to click, double click on this, and you can see right here we have a Blurb logo. If you allow that Blurb logo to be printed, you'll save money. So it's $40.99 if I allow that Blurb logo to be printed. If I don't want that printed, you can see it jumped to $50.24, but it's not going to print. Now, if you're a professional and you're creating a book for a client, you may not want that Blurb logo. And hopefully your client is paying you a handsome fee for this book, so you're making a nice profit. On the other hand, if you're just doing this uh, for yourself, or you know, your own bookshelf, uh, for your own coffee table, you may not mind having that Blurb logo printed there. So it's really up to you. I'm going to have it off, so we don't have that Blurb logo. 
So we have our choices here, and I'm printing this uh, landscape hardcover book with premium luster paper without the logo, and it's a photo book, and it's going to run me $50.24. Now you'll notice we have this view now because I double-clicked on that page that had the logo on it. We have three different views. We have this view here, which is kind of like a grid view, where you're going to see all the pages of your book all at once. We have this page here, which you'll have a two-page view, left page, right page. And then we have a single page view. And there's real easy keyboard shortcuts to jump between these three views. Hold the command key in if you have a Mac, control key in if you have a PC. And since I have a Mac, I'm hitting, holding the command key in. I'm going to hit the E key with it, command E, and I'll get this full book view. Command R, the R key happens to be right next to the E key on a keyboard, and we'll get the side-by-side -side view. Or command T, and the T is right next to the R and we get that single page view. So we have E, R, and T, and they're all right next to each other. Just hold the command or control key in, and you could hit the E, the R, or the T to jump between those three views. So we're gonna stay here. Now we wanna lay out the book. I didn't have auto layout, layout turned on, on, but we have it here. So I could just click this auto layout, and when I do that, you'll see that my book got populated. And you can see the, the covers look good. We have the back cover has that back cover image, and the front cover has the front cover image. And we'll zoom in. There's the back cover. It's on the left, but because this is the binding of the book. And this is the front cover image, and that's the way I want it. And you can see that it's laid out pretty good. It's not zoomed in. I didn't get anything cropped. It's the way I want it. But if I go back to grid view, there is an issue here. Look at this one. Cut off her head. Now, even though I had that fit option to fit my images, the preset it used, one photo per page, didn't use that. It had zoom to fit. So it zoomed in. So I have to modify my preset so that my images go on this book the way I want them to because I don't want her head cut off or anything like that. So what we're going to do, we'll go back to grid view, and you can see that if there is ever an issue uh, with anything, I don't see any, but it, many times you'll see an exclamation point. It's warning you that that page may not print correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right here where it says preset. Now, right now it's one photo per page. We're going to click there. We're going to edit the layout. So we get our book. We have the left-hand pages and the right-hand pages, and you could do them independently of one another. You could have it laid out the way you'd want. Now, I do want a fixed layout book, and I want one photo per page. So you have all these different layouts. I'm going to go with this one photo per page, and I want it to be fixed. One photo. You could do two photos. And then you have these, let's say you're going two photos. You have these different layouts per page. Two photos with text on the right text on the left with the two photos, text on the bottom, no text, borders, and so on. So I want the one photo, right? And I want this one where it's going to go right to the edge. I don't want any border around it, although a vertical image will have a border because I'm going to go down here where it says zoom photos to fit. When you do zoom photos to fit, it won't crop your image. It's going to print the image so the entire image shows up. Now, it does that on the covers automatically, but on everything else, you saw how that one lady had the puffy coat on. It cut off her head and her feet. So we don't want that. We want fit. And I'm going to match the long edges. That just makes it kind of line up a little better and look a little better um, You know, as you go from page to page. I'll add photo text. I want to add the text. I want to align it with photo. And I want to... Um, no, we're going to keep a line with photo off just to see, you know, that if it, w uh, you'll see, it kind of just changes where it is on the, uh, image itself. And I'll explain as I go. And what text style do I want? Do you want to use the caption or the title? Now, remember, I want to use the title because in the title, I had the city I was in and the date I took the picture and I want a serif. I'd like the serif type text. You could change that later, but I'm going to go with title, serif, right there. And we're going to create a whole new preset for this. I could update my one photo per page preset by clicking right here, but I'm just going to click save. 
and I'm going to call it my book preset. And then I'm going to click create. All right, now I created the preset and it's selected here, but you could see nothing happened over here. Uh, we're still all cut off. And you can see we have that little exclamation point I was talking about there telling me there's an issue. Well, what we need to do now is we need to clear this layout. So there's a little button here, clear. We'll click that. Now we're back to where we started. And now we'll click auto layout again. And when we do, you'll see that it will populate your page. But now you'll notice as I double click, I have the entire lady in the image and I have my caption there as well. Now you may have issues, first of all, where the caption is not like it kind of blends in with the picture. It's the wrong color basically. And I'll show you how to, how to deal with that in a moment. But as far as the actual layout of the pictures, I love it now. There's nothing getting cut off. All the images are kind of laid out the way I want them. And you can see it looks pretty good. So, so far, so good. As I go from image to image, um, everything is fine. See like this. Looks good. I like it. Nothing's cropped out. Now let's go through this a uh, little further. We have that auto layout we took care of. Now we have the actual page. Do we want page numbers? Well, let's go on an image. Let's say this one doesn't really matter, but we have this one. Kind of like this one because these guys kind of were dressed similarly. We both had similar heads and I kind of like that shot. Do I want page numbers? So I'll click here and you can see it added a page number right here. So you could control where that goes. It's in the bottom corner. I could go in the top corner if I prefer. I could go just in the top, which is more in the middle there. On the side, which is right there, which I wouldn't want. Or at the bottom, which is down here, and I don't want that. So you could control where you want this uh, page number to go. Do you want it to go the left and right or on the left only? Meaning, if I go to this two page view, it'll only be on this left hand page and no page number will be on the right hand page. On the other hand, if I go right only, it'll only be on the right hand page and not on the left hand page or left and right, it will be on both. So, um, you know, it's up to you if you want page numbers. Technically, I don't want page numbers at all. So I would turn that off. Now, as far as the image, if you still want to resize your image, you would do that here. Uh, you could just double click on an image or click on an image when you're in this either single page view or double page view. And you could use this um, slider to zoom in or out like that. You also could click on this uh, little square here and you could change the single page you happen to have active. I have this page on the right active. If I want two images... I could then pick a template, let's say that one. So I could have an image here and an image here. So I could individually go through my book and alter each of the pages as I go. I don't want that, so I'll undo that. But you could do that again by just clicking on the square and then choosing the type of page you want, two photos, three photos, multiple photos, whatever. And then the samples will be down here and you will pick one for your page. So you could maybe have, you know, different, you know, vary your book. Instead of one image on each page, you could have two on one page, three on another page, and so on, and go through your book that way. Uh, so you could modify your layout with that. You could add a new page. So if you decide, oh, I want to add two more pictures, you could add a, whole, add a whole page. Or just add a blank page, if you prefer. And you do that if you have an odd number of images and you, you're getting a blank page at the end. Just add another one, and then you could add images to those pages if you choose. The next is the guides. These are things that aren't going to be printed. These are just help you better see what is going on with each page. If I turn it off, you can see these little squares right now are there, the grid pattern. If I click the whole thing, all the guides are off, and you can see it's just blank pages. Uh, page bleed. Um, since these images go right to the edge of the page, it'll overprint so that it makes sure that you don't have any white paper at all showing at those edges. So if you uh, need to see that bleed area, make sure that's checked and you'll see that bleed area. So that probably will not be printed. 
a printer, a tech safe area. You probably could barely see it, but there's barely a square going around these images. And that is where it's safe to put text and the text will definitely print without a problem. If you go outside of that area, the text won't print or may not print properly. And you could turn those guides on and off. There's also other um, guides here that may not show on this specific t single page template I'm using uh, because I'm not, I have, there's templates with text and things like that. And a lot of this, these guides are for that. So you would just experiment with these and turn on or off anything you want. Again, it doesn't affect how your image is printed. The next is the actual cell itself. So we're on this cell and I mentioned you could zoom in or zoom out all the way with this slider. But also if you're clicked on the image, you could kind of zoom it out that way and give this padding around the image. You also could add a border and the border color um, for the image itself, it's not showing on this specific template, but it isn't the whole thing. It's just gonna be a border of the image itself. Let me see if I could find one that might show a border. Let's go here. Oops, sorry. If I could find a vertical image here, this one here. If I show a border, no, that one doesn't either. It just the, happens to be the, the template you're on and things like that. But that isn't this whole area though. We'll get to that in a minute. So normally I don't want a border around my image, but if you pick a template that has borders, then you'd see the border I'm talking about. The photo text. Um, if I click it off, you could see on this specific image that I'm clicked on, it's taking it away. Also, you could offset it. You can move it around. You could also align it with the photo. Um, you could, uh, let's see here, nothing active there. The actual page text itself, uh, you could offset it. There, put it at the top or bottom. Uh, whatever. All that is controlled with this text section um, of this. You could also, I should uh, mention, that you could here um, put what you want there. Like I have the title. Well, if this one image, if I want the caption there, Nikon D850 20 to 300 lens at once, you know, all that, I could put that for this one image. It's not affecting all of them, it's only doing this one. But I'm going to go back to the title for that. Okay. And we'll turn that off. Oops, we want that on. Sorry. There we go. And now I mentioned that we could affect, like this isn't showing up very well because it's black and it's on like darker gray. So what you do is select all the text by clicking with your left mouse button and dragging across and selecting all the text. Then right here where it says character, click there. And I'm going to go with white. So we'll click white and then close this down. And you can see how now that one's white. This one stayed black. So I could go through these image by image and change the color of the text so it better shows through for that specific image. Now I'm not going to do it for this demonstration, but you could see what, um, what I'm talking about. There's several of these images that probably have text in it that would be better served to be a different color. So I could come in here, click there, and pick white. Also, you could affect the size of the text with that slider there. Um, you could, uh, the opacity of the text, whether you want the text to not be solid, you want it to kind of have some opacity to it there. You could just ch experiment with your text, you know, scrunch it in, push it out. Uh, baseline, push it up, push it down. Little things you could do all with this type. And you also could change the text itself. Right now I'm using Adobe Garamin Pro. Uh, you could change this to, let's say Garamin. You can see how the text changes. Gothic. Let's go back to the Adobe Garamin Pro. All right. And you could change, make it bold, italic. 
something like that. So you could change all your text attributes with this type section of the right hand panel. Now, the background itself, let's go to an image that better illustrates. Through here. Sorry, through here. Here we go. This will be good. So, Apply background globally. So this is going to app happen to every image. If I have that clicked off, it'll only happen to the one image you're clicked on. So I want to apply it globally. So it does it to all the images. Now, do you have a graphic you want back here? Maybe you have some type of graphic that says, um, maybe you're doing a wedding book and you have uh, a nice graphic that has going diagonally or something, the name of your studio. And it's very light, not it's unobtrusive. And you want that as your background. You would drag that image right here and then it will show up in the background behind all these images. On the other hand, you may prefer to just have a different color, like I want to do. Also, I should add, you could click this uh, little, um, little drop down here, and you could see there's different types of graphics. Let's say I do want this, um, this map one, like right there. Now you could see the map will show up behind there. How it, and how it will show up. Now I don't want that at all, so we're going to undo that. But I do want to change the color. So I'm going to go where it says graphic right here. And I'm going to click on this little, or I'm sorry, where it says background color. Actually, let me do that again. I didn't properly demonstrate that. Let's go back to travel and let's pick this map. And then you could do the opacity right here. You can see how it's making it darker or lighter behind there. Okay. So that's, you know, probably a good thing to show. So we're going to go with that with nothing there. Now, background color. I don't want white around the images, so I'm going to click this little checkbox to turn that on, and I'm going to go to this swatch, click on that, and I'm going to want a gray. I think I want maybe that gray, and you can see now because I have the apply background globally that it's doing it to every single image. So as I go through it's all gray. And if I turn these guides off because they're kind of distracting, this is how it will print. Now, this one here I messed with and I didn't fix it. Uh, the uh, cell padding, I want that all the way out like that. And we'll go back to this. So you could see now, here, let's start at the beginning of my book. And we'll go to this one. So we have the back page, front page. Then as you open the book, it will repeat the picture that's on the cover. Then we have the you know left picture, right picture, left picture, right picture, and so on. Now I could come through, I'd have to change some of this text color on some of these, but I do like the gray a little better. I could change that again down here. I could click on this swatch and maybe I want a little darker gray. Kind of like that a little better. So I have it kind of set out. Different street photography images. And so far, so good. Now, the one thing we should probably talk about is the actual cover itself. Now, notice it didn't affect that here. Um, that's because the covers are kind of independent of the book itself, so it didn't do any of the coloring there. But I do want to put um, a title there. Um, so what we could do is we could go up to text, and we'll go to click on this image, and we'll click on photo text. And I want to add some page text to this image. So what we're going to do is actually... I think if I turn this off, click there, and click, uh, nope, we'll leave it right there. We'll take that off. We're going to add this page text. This where I always get a little confused with text. I apologize. So we're going to go to the top. This is the top area. Uh, street photography. And then um, I'm going to change this to... Something I, I kind of like. Bondi small caps. There we go. I've got to select it all. Go to Bondi small caps. Like that. 
and I could change the offset where I want it, but I want it right there. Um, and I'm going to make it a little bigger. Like that. I think that's street photography. And then I'm going to go put it at the bottom, at the top. I think I like it right there. So you could then change this text, add text to the um, front back of the image, whatever you like. You could go to the spine of the image and put text here as well. Um, I am going to uh, put, I think, uh, my name. Oops. I want page text and it's not letting me do it. There it is. Anthony Morganti and I'm going to uh, use Lucinda Grand, I think. Oops, got to select it all again. Put it down here towards the middle. Select it all. We are going to make it a little bigger. We are going to center it a little better. And I think that's good enough for this. Like that. So we have my name in the, in the, on the uh, binding itself, street photography there. And let's say for the sake of this demonstration that we like what we did, we could go through now the images. Let's say I'm ready to send it to blurb. When I'm satisfied, everything's good. You could click this little box and book to blurb. And it, um, some books, photos in this book have transparency. The transparency shows opaque in your book. That's okay. I have one apparently that I used. So I did something in Photoshop. So it's, uh, telling me which one. So I could just, um, click okay. Cause it's fine to be opaque. It's, you know, got whatever I did. I don't know, but I don't remember. So. Then it clicks here and then you could uh, give your book a title, a subtitle and your name and then upload the book and it's going to cost me $55.19. So that's as quick as possible, as concise as I could be with the book module. Now I am going to be doing, um, after this series is done and it's almost done, we only have a few more episodes, I'll be doing follow-up videos, tips and tricks on Lightroom and I'm sure many of you will email me questions about the book module and in that video series I'll try to answer those questions so I'll be a little more um, exact about some of these different options in the book module because it's really impossible to fit it all into one video um, so I I'm sorry if I lost you during this I did the best I could there is a lot here and I'm the first one to admit I don't print books very often at all I do have a video two videos with an older version of Lightroom where I printed a book, actually sent it to Blurb, then unboxed that book that came from Blurb and showed the finished book. So I do have prior experience and videos demonstrating the book module. The book module has changed slightly since then. So um, hopefully this helps you create a book that you're proud of in Lightroom. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.